So the developer direct has been and gone and we now have a solid looking roadmap for the year ahead. And I actually walked away from that showcase knowing that I'll definitely be playing three out of the five games. Now that's not because the other two are bad. They actually look really cool and interesting, but it's just that I don't usually play them types of games. So there's nothing wrong with that. We've all got our likes and dislikes. And because the showcase was so strong, I actually believe Xbox can come out on top this year. So well done Xbox on a really good showcase. So we're gonna go through the direct in the order that they showcased it to us. And first up was Obsidian. This is a studio that knows how to make an immersive game. With the likes of the Outer Worlds, Fallout New Vegas, Pentiment and Grounded under their belts, they showed off their new game, Avowed, which is an action fantasy RPG. Now, this is a game that I've been really looking forward to, and I was really surprised as I felt they played it extremely safe and didn't really give us the deep dive that we were expecting. The combat looked really clunky, and I was getting really worried at first because the Sword and Shield gameplay did not look good and done no favours for the actual gameplay they were showing us. But then they showed us the fighting with the wand and I was beaming from ear to ear because the combat flowed a lot better, especially with the spells and magic. Being able to tangle and freeze enemies and then get your sword out to smash them was really cool to see as well. And the difference was night and day. They then went on to say that save loadouts are also available where we can seamlessly switch our weapons, creating an even better combat experience. And it did look so much better in the gameplay they showed us. Freezing an enemy with your wand and then getting the sword out and shattering them. It did look kind of good, to be honest. I will give it that. I will give the sword its props there. It didn't look as bad as the initial sword and shield gameplay. Also, can I just say that the dual wielding wands look pretty tasty too? So after seeing this, I actually perked up and thought to myself, this is more like it. This is the stuff we want to see. They then moved on to talk about quests, stating that some will have us making tough decisions with extreme consequences. They showed us this side quest here where we come across soldiers and we decide whether to believe private and the wacky side of events or not. I would have liked to see more dialogue interactions here and maybe some skill tree or abilities in the menus as... That is what us fans of RPGs want to see, which is another reason I thought they just played it a bit too safe. They could have just let us see a little bit more. The regions also look full of life and adventure, plus they seem stunning, which adds to the vibrancy. We will also discover secrets that will leave our mark on the game. With the game not being fully open world as well, that means more meaningful gameplay. I'm still excited for Avowed, but I left that showcase just wanting more and I just couldn't shake that feeling. But I'm sure we will get more further down the line. Avowed will be releasing in full 2024, so I'm gonna edge my bets and say probably the back end of September, but we'll just have to wait and see until we get a concrete date. Next up was Ninja Theory with Senua Saga Hellblade 2. Now, I've actually not played number one, but after watching this, I'll definitely be jumping in sooner rather than later. Now, Ninja Theory actually showcased Hellblade 2 really well, and I think they gave the fans exactly what they would have wanted, and you definitely didn't feel you needed more after this. So Senua is back, and this time she is actually after the Vikings that raided her village. And she has also made peace with her past. She arrives in Iceland facing up to giants who have created chaos across the land and Senua will also face off against a violent threat called the Draugar. I think I've pronounced that right. She still experiences psychosis and this adds the real emotion players felt in the first game. And to be honest, not many games can do that. And that is why I'm actually embarrassed that I've never played this game before. I've heard of Hellblade, of course I have, but I've just always put my nose up to it and I don't know why. I'm just being extremely honest there. I feel really embarrassed and I'm actually going to download it because I love games as much as the next person that can really drag you in emotionally and you're just so invested with the game and Hellblade really does seem like that kind of game. So after doing this video, I'm going to get on Game Pass, I'm going to download it and we are going to play it over the next week. But moving on, Ninja Fury have added a new combat system this time round, and I have to say the combat looks dark and real along with being brutal. Ninja Theory also says they want the player to feel like you just scrape through every battle. They also talked about the sound design and with Senua hearing voices they really put in some real honest work with this and they really lean into people's emotions with it because obviously if you're centering around someone with psychosis you're going to have to have the voices in their head telling them things. They're going to have to be reacting to that. And then they are also working with a band called Highlung. I've never heard of them. 
but they're working with them on the music. So I expect Hellblade 2 to be up for a few sound design awards and actually I expect them to win them as well. Hellblade will be roughly around the same length as the first one, so about eight hours, which for a game like this is absolutely fine. Um, although it's only going to have a digital release, which in my opinion isn't great because people still like to have physical copies, but maybe that's because of Game Pass, I don't know. The release date is made of 21st, so that's not too far away. I actually think they nailed this. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Hellblade 2 is, a, is a, all about, and I do think it's going to be up for Game of the Year. I just, I do, and I think it might win it. Next up, we got Shadow Drop from Square Enix. The game they showed off is one that I'm really not familiar with, but I am just glad that Microsoft are branching out and collabing with different studios, especially studios as big as Square Enix. The game they showed off is Visions of Mana and is the first console installment of the main Mana series in 15 years, so Microsoft's networking is definitely paying off here. And I have to say the art style looks absolutely epic, with the combat looking snappy, with you jumping up, moving to the side, then slamming down with your sword and abilities. Fighting these monsters also looks great, and although this is one of the games I wasn't sure I'd play, it actually looks like a ton of fun, and I definitely see the appeal with this. Also, the background music sounds great and flows perfectly with the game. To be honest, I'm just glad Xbox has got a JRPG joining the console, as it's been a long time coming. The game actually releases this summer, and depending on how my backlog of games go, I actually might pick this up because like I said, it does look fun and I've never played this style of game before. So as I said, the game is coming out in the summer. So just keep an eye out for more details dropping and let's hope Xbox can get more collabs like this in the future. And after that, it was Oxide Games' turn to show off their new strategy based game, Ara. Now this game looks super interesting, but unfortunately the genre just isn't for me. But what I do like is you can tell the studio have absolutely loved making this game and poured everything they had into this so for you guys that do like this style of game i have no doubt you're going to really love playing this so oxide says they want players to feel the impact of their decisions so they will see the impact of the choices they made in the game also the game has a procedurally generated alternate earth called the living world which is bursting with life and will reflect the choices that the player makes over the course of the game the game also has a prestige system which is the player's score and proves their worth as a leader You'll also have flexibility with how you want to lead with science, military and arts and culture being on the menu. But it does look really interesting. It looks like there's a lot more involved in this game than what there generally is in this type of game. But there is also a crafting system as well, which looks really cool. You harvest resources and turn them into goods and components, which can be used for international trade and improving your people's lives and building weapons. The game also comes with a simultaneous turn system where all players' actions are resolved at the same time and not turn-based. Again, I'm guessing that's a new feature in this type of game. Being strategic is... Personally, I wish I had the time to get into strategy games as this looks really cool, but unfortunately, I don't. There's just too many other games to play in the genres that I love. Ara is coming to Game Pass in fall this year, so if this sounds like your cup of tea, put it on your calendars, guys, because it looks extremely interesting and then we had the star of the show indiana jones developed by machine games and dude i was waiting for this i was so excited i've loved this franchise since i was a teeny weeny little boy many many years ago and i have to say i'm absolutely buzzing to play what looks like a really solid indiana jones game so as you can see our good buddy todd howard over here is producing indiana jones so it's quite evident what he had his eyes on during the development of starfield don't come at me, guys. I'm just giving you facts. That's that's on them, not me. The opening cinematic set the tone for me, with Indiana smirking, clenching his fist, and giving a good old-fashioned headbutt. And I absolutely love that. And it's clear the cinematics have had some extra love. And they did also go on to say that they were going for a movie-like approach with them. And that's quite evident to see in what we saw during this showcase. I thought the world design was actually on point with what the game is about and you can see they've taken the inspiration from all the movies and that's really great to see. And the combat also looked great as well with the whip being absolutely on point. We can also use the whip to climb, traverse and even distract enemies. The combat as a hybrid approach mixing melee, stealth and gunplay with how we approach any situation totally up to us. So that's nice to hear. 
The game is actually set between the events of Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Last Crusade, and it sees us traveling to the likes of Rome, the Pyramids of Egypt, the Himalayas, and the Forgotten Temple of Sukkotai. I think I said that right. And we have many more places we can go. The music was spot on as well, and no doubt will run nicely alongside the gameplay, and it will just add to that movie and cinematic effect that they're going for. Although we play as Indiana, we do have another protagonist alongside us, and that is Gina. She is a reporter, and she's going to be helping us out along the way, with the main villain being Emmerich Voss. Machine Games did say that they have leaned heavily into puzzles, which makes absolute sense, and they've made some optional for those that love to solve them. And the more you look for, the more you'll discover. So if you are a nosy bugger in these games, this is going to suit you down to the ground. Now, I just want to sound off by saying there has been a lot said, especially over on social media, about Indiana Jones being first person, with people comparing it to Uncharted, saying Uncharted was in third person, blah de blah de blah the, the typical bullshit you hear. Let's just say you wouldn't have the game Uncharted if it wasn't for the likes of the Indiana Jones movies. Some games work well in first person, and machine games thrive at making them. I thought the Wolfenstein games were really good, and I like it when studios stick to what they're good at, and this is what they've done here. They're good at making these sorts of games. I get that you weird corporate shills have to stick to your side and hate because a game you would love to try is on another console, but come on, guys, it's just plain sad. And to say the graphics look shit is a straight-up lie. Anyway, I for one cannot wait for this to release this year and no doubt fans of the franchise will be extremely pleased. And that was the end of the showcase. Overall, a really solid display from Xbox and the year ahead looks extremely promising. And it's been a long time coming, but I actually think Xbox are going to come out on top this year. Hellblade 2 and Indiana Jones are certainties to do well at the Game Awards. But guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It helps the video and this channel out massively. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for similar content like this. Anyway, have a good rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.